time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening. This is Frank Knight. May I introduce Mr. William Bradford Huey, noted author and analyst and editor-in-chief of the Longines Chronoscope, and Mr. Carl Hess, press editor of Newsweek magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Harold Velde, United States Congressman from Illinois and Chairman of the Un-American Activities Committee. Mr. Velde, it's a pleasure to welcome you to the Chronoscope again. And our viewers, of course, know you as chairman of the rather highly controversial House Un-American Activities Committee. And tonight, we'd like for you to tell us something about uh, your plans for 1953. What would be your first area of investigation? Well, Mr. Huey and Mr. Hess, I want to assure you, first of all, it is a great pleasure to be on your fi very fine program again. As to the first area of investigation, I believe, uh, and I think the rest of the uh, members of the committee concur with me in this, that our first duty is to weed out the communists and fellow travelers and pinkos, as they're properly known, uh, from the executive branch of government. Any particular part now? Well, uh, primarily the State Department and the Department of Defense. And then, of course, after we are able to do that, I think the uh, next important thing is to act as a watchdog committee uh, to see that uh, no commies or other subversives of any kind infiltrate the new Eisenhower administration. The first uh, thing, I suppose, is you're aimed at the, at the holdovers, the people who were in, a pre in the previous administration who haven't yet been discharged from government. Uh, yes, naturally, uh, Mr. Huey, uh, it's going to take quite a long while to change over. The control of the executive department of government is going to be a gradual process. Now, sir, you, you mentioned uh, that you've been investigating the State Department, I think, is fairly well known. But you mentioned the Defense Department. Mm -hmm. Now, are you directing a major investigating effort at the Defense Department now? At the present time, there is one subpoena out for a very important witness in the Department of Defense. And, of course, uh, it's impossible for me to say anything more about that at this time. But uh, we do expect to uh, show that uh, several of the people in the last administration uh, were very close to being uh, communists and very close to the Soviet government. Do you feel that any of them had uh, a part in influence in policy? Actually? Oh, certainly I do, and uh, I believe that we will be able to prove that eventually. Important policy in the Defense Department? Yes, I think the important policy in the Defense and Department. And you think these people had access to, uh, to secret information in the Defense Department? I do believe that is true. Uh, we have had, of course, uh, in the past, investigations into the uh, Defense Department. Uh, we've had uh, investigations into the Signal Corps Intelligence uh, Department. Uh, and we've had other investigations. Uh, well, of course, as you perhaps remember, we had General Walter Beadle Smith, head of the CIA, who in Philadelphia said that he could give us some testimony in executive session, it is a closed session that he couldn't possibly give us in the open session, which we were having at that time. So we have had some investigations into the Defense Department, which leads us to believe that while it isn't uh, extremely serious, uh, it's something that we have to give our attention to and weed it out uh, before well, it goes any further. Do you anticipate taking up, for example, the remark that even the CIA has been infiltrated? Oh, certainly, mm -hmm. certainly. By the do. CIA, you mean the Central Intelligence oh, yes. Agency? Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Now, sir, one of the... You, you say that you want to protect the new Eisenhower administration from subversives. Uh, do you expect to get uh, a higher degree of cooperation from the Eisenhower administration than you got from the Truman administration? Uh, certainly, but when I say that uh, to protect the uh, Eisenhower administration, I don't mean that in a political way. I think the protection of the Eisenhower administration will certainly be a protection of the American people. But uh, actually, we do expect to, as we in Congress, 
in the legislative branch do expect to get a lot more cooperation from the executive branch well, of government than they have in the past. Specifically, on the matter of, uh, I remember that, and our viewers will remember that uh, President Truman repeatedly refused to turn over to you mm -hmm. certain executive files. Now, do you, do you think that President Eisenhower will make those executive files available to you? Yes, but understand, I don't believe that uh, President Eisenhower, Mr. J. Edgar Hoover, or Mr. Brownell, or any of the uh, cabinet heads should give all of their information to the legislative branch. There is certainly... Well, all that you'd ask for, though. Do well, I, I, I uh, personally would not ask for anything that I didn't mm. think they could give. Uh, what I'm referring to is the loyalty files mm. of the uh, various departments in the executive branch. Well, I believe that you uh, mean we those should the have access to those. Have. Now, the committee itself, of course, has had a, as I say, a very controversial career from the days that Martin Dyes was its first chairman. Now, do you feel that the committee today has a, a degree of public support that it's never had? Yes, I do, from all of the letters that uh, come in to our committee, and they come in at the rate of about 1,000 a, a day. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, by far, a great majority, and I would just guess about 90% of them are favorable to the well, work that the Un-American Activities Committee has been what, doing. What problem do you still have in, in public acceptance of the work, if any problems? Well, there are always a, uh, a lot of people who will never accept any uh, program that we undertake uh, because it might affect them uh, in the well, do you have We have uh, a lot of left-wingers, a lot of uh, fellow travelers, a lot of pinkos will object to anything we do, regardless of what it is. What about, what about uh, money? Do you, does your committee spend more money than any other committee? In Congress? Yes, we do. Uh, while it is the smallest uh, committee in uh, membership, we only have nine members on the Un-American Activities Committee. We have a staff that uh, numbers into the 50s, uh, and our appropriation, uh, which we're going to ask for this year, is 300000 That's more than last year, isn't it? Yes, it's uh, just $15,000 more than uh. we used last year. However, um, uh, the other uh, committees of uh, Congress do not have the same problem that w is presented to us. Uh, they didn't keep uh, extensive files as we keep. And I want to say here now that all of our files uh, are open to uh, inspection by the various uh, intelligence agencies of the executive branch, including the Do you maintain FBI. liaison with them? Certainly we do. And uh, we intend to continue maintaining that liaison with them, in well, other words, sir, cooperating with in them. In addition to your investigation of the Defense Department, I believe that it's uh, the most controversial thing you are about to do is some investigation of, of subversive, alleged subversive activities in the colleges. Do you expect to get around to the educational system uh, this year? Yes, yeah, some of the first witnesses we will call uh, will be uh, professors and people who are interested in education. I want to say that by and large we have had the cooperation of uh, a great number of universities and colleges throughout the country. They want to know whether there's any uh, subversive influences operating in their individual uh, colleges and universities. But what about the objection to loyalty oaths in universities? Well, there is a considerable uh, objection to uh, loyalty uh, oaths. It's uh, uh, brought about largely by the uh, American Association of University Professors, I believe, which is a very uh, close organization. Uh, they might have some reason to uh, object to uh, uh, loyalty oaths. But I believe that when we have completed our investigation and have our hearings, and I'm very firm in this, that uh, they, uh, a lot of the people who have had objection to signing the loyalty oath will no longer have that. Well, are, are these loyalty oaths uh, workable, efficient? Do, what do exactly do they achieve in a university? Well, legally, uh, uh, certainly, uh, when a person signs a, uh, a loyalty oath, uh, uh, which is somewhat similar to a uh, non-communist uh, non affidavit uh, under the Taft-Hartley uh, law, he's going to think twice uh, before he signs that oath uh, for fear of being uh, prosecuted for perjury well, before he signed it. And now, so you were, you were with the FBI, I believe, before you went to Congress. Yes, I was with the FBI Didn't for three years. Didn't you specialize in sabotage? And 
Well, uh, mostly in espionage uh, activities, Soviet espionage activities. Do you feel that there is uh, more or less communist activity in the United States today? Is it growing or is it uh, becoming less? I believe the actual communist activity has uh, become less in the past several years than it has been for uh, uh, since 1932. Quality or quantity? Well, that's in quantity, mm -hmm. and possibly not in quantity. The, there's still a very real and immediate danger mm -hmm. of uh, the, the uh, infiltration uh, of Communist Party members, of course, who are controlled by the Soviet in our uh, various uh, uh, fields, uh, uh, free institutions. In this well, country. on your investigation of, of education, do uh, you feel that you will have the cooperation of most of the educational institutions, or do you think the teachers' organizations will, f will resist your investigation? Beyond the one you've mentioned? Well, uh, certainly I uh, think that we will have the cooperation of the great uh, majority of our educational institutions. But I want to say, first of all, that uh, we're not concentrating on any one individual uh, uh, institution, except those direct communist schools. For instance, the Lincoln schools, the uh, California Labor School, the Jefferson School, all those schools uh, which uh, largely teach labor and communism directly and under direct influence of the Communist Party. And, and as a final question, sir, you don't feel that, that you are going to violate civil rights in this investigation? Well, there is a possibility that we might, uh, in some cases, uh, at least it might be made to appear <coughs> that we are violating civil rights, especially uh, it will be made to appear that way by the uh, communists themselves. Well, thank but you very much for being with us this evening, sir. It's been a pleasure, I'm sure. The opinions <coughs> that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Carl Hess. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Harold Velde, United States Congressman from Illinois and Chairman of the Un-American Activities Committee. How would you go about hiring a man for an important job? Well, in a man or in a watch, the record of past performance is the only yardstick to real value. That's why so many sensible people own Longines watches. The honors which Longines watches have won are a record of past performance. These World's Fair grand prizes and gold medals, each a highest award, were bestowed by many men in many lands at many times. Observatory Accuracy Awards, won just yesterday, so to speak, are also part of the Longines record. From the record, there could be no doubt that Longines watches are above and beyond the ordinary. For almost a hundred years, Longines has been shown to be close to the finest watch in all the world, by every standard, beauty, integrity of manufacture, accuracy, and reliability of performance. The Longines record made Longines the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift. Longines, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. History repeated and you are there Sundays on the CBS television network.